This time we're looking at static and dynamic resistance and how to use a shortcut to all of this iteration and nonlinear techniques when we're only interested in small changes in voltages and currents in diode nonlinear circuits. So I'll start off with a reminder about what static and dynamic resistance are. Static resistance is the ratio of the voltage across a component to the current flowing through a component. So if I plot a graph like this with current on the y-axis and voltage on the x-axis, then the gradient is going to be the current divided by the voltage, which means the static resistance will be 1 over the gradient. The dynamic resistance, on the other hand, is the ratio of a small change in voltage to the small change in current that corresponds to that change in voltage. That corresponds to 1 over the gradient of this characteristic at any point. Zooming up on a small section of the graph, therefore, just to show the change in voltage and the change in current that corresponds to that change in voltage, we're approximating the curve through that small change in voltage and change in current as a straight line and saying that the dynamic resistance, I'll write it as R din, dynamic, is equal to that change in voltage divided by the corresponding change in current. And that's true for small changes in voltage and small changes in current, where we can assume that the graph is approximately a straight line for these small changes. Real diodes don't behave quite as nicely as this, but I've chosen a fictional diode which has a very linear characteristic over this range of voltages between 500 and 700 millivolts. What's the dynamic resistance? Well, the dynamic resistance is the change in voltage divided by the corresponding change in current. So if we look between 500 millivolts and 700 millivolts, we'll probably get the best estimate of what the gradient is at 600 millivolts. So, from 700 millivolts to 500 millivolts, there's a change in voltage, the voltage increasing by 200 millivolts. And from 8 milliamps to 16 milliamps, the current is increasing by 8 milliamps. So the dynamic resistance of this diode at this operating point, the best estimate of that we can make, is 25 ohms. It means that for small changes in current and voltage around this operating point, we can treat the diode as a 25 ohm resistor. For example, supposing that diode was in a circuit like this, there were 600 millivolts across it, and there's a current flowing through it, which I guess we could work out reasonably easily. There's 4.4 volts across this 1K resistor, so the current must be 4.4 milliamps. And we're asked, what would the voltage across the resistor be if the voltage source was increased to 5.5 volts? Well, We'll just work in terms of the changes in voltage and the changes in current. And for small changes in voltage, we can assume that the diode behaves as if it is a resistor of its dynamic resistance, 25 ohms. So let's consider the circuit from the point of view of a small change in voltage. The small change in voltage is half a volt. The diode, for small changes, behaves like a 25 ohm resistor. And this resistor here, a 1K resistor, well, the static resistance and the dynamic resistance of a resistor is the same thing. It's just equal to the value of the resistor. So that would remain as a 1K resistor. So this is the circuit that we're trying to solve for the small changes. This is a potential divider. So we can instantly write the voltage across this 1K resistor here using the potential divider formula. 0.5 volts times 1K 
divided by the total resistance in the network, 1025. And that works out to be 0.5 times 1000. I could have just written 500, never mind. 1025, 0.4878 volts. So that is the change in the voltage across this 1K resistor. Since the voltage across the 1K resistor is 4.4 volts with a 5 volt source there, adding another 0.5 volts would suggest that the voltage across this 1K resistor would become 4.4 plus 0.4878, which is 4.8878 volts. So that would be our answer of what the new voltage across this resistor would be. Much easier calculation. No need to worry about nonlinear characteristics of the diodes. If we're only interested in small changes in current and voltage, we can just assume that the diode behaves like a resistor equal to its dynamic resistance. Before we leave this topic, I'll just show you a way that you can calculate a very good approximation to the dynamic resistance of a diode from its ideality factor. Derivation goes like this. From the Shockley equation, we know that the current flowing through the diode is the saturation current times e to the power of the voltage across the diode divided by 25 millivolts times the ideality factor. Um, minus 1. Now, in most cases of interest, this term here is going to be much, much greater than 1. Certainly, if I'm getting any appreciable forward current, like a few milliamps, then bearing in mind the saturation current is typically a few nanoamps, this term here has to be of the order of a million or so. Much, much bigger than minus 1. So I can approximate the Shockley equation for forward biased diodes carrying a reasonable amount of current by just this simpler expression. Neglect the 1. Now, if I differentiate this with respect to the voltage, I get this. di dv equals is times the differential of this, which is 1 over 25 millivolts times n times E V over 25 millivolts times n. Well, that is equal to the current divided by the saturation current from the formula above. So that would just give me saturation current over 25 millivolts times n times the current divided by the saturation current. Saturation currents cancel out which just leaves me with the current divided by 25 millivolts times n. This is the rate of change of current with voltage. In other words, it's the small change in current divided by a small change in voltage. That's 1 over the dynamic resistance. The dynamic resistance is the rate of change of voltage with current, small voltage over small current. And that's just going to be 25 millivolts times n divided by the current flowing through the diode. It's a rather simple, neat little result. OK, that's it for this time. Next time we'll have a look at Zener diodes and a way of solving circuits using those and a technique called piecewise linearity.